the Lord will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son. She shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. You may be seated. Please work. Animals came to prepare your bed. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Shepherds stood guard, marveled, and said, Come, Lord Jesus, come. Angels sang to calm your cries. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And all the world gave you one great sigh. Ah, Lord Jesus, you have come. Let us worship God and offer our prayers. Let us pray. Dear Father, you sent your only begotten Son, that we might have new life. We give you glory. Lord Jesus Christ, you became flesh and dwelt among us, that we might become your people. We bless you. Holy Spirit, you direct and rule our lives. We praise you. Indeed, from the depths of our hearts, we worship you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever, and we offer our sincerest gratitude for your loving mercy. Be gracious to us, we pray. We, your people, have walked in darkness for too long, carrying the yoke of guilt. We have felt the sting of the rod of sin and oppression. Wonderful Counselor, guide us to walk in your light. Free us from our burdens and establish your peace in our world. May your presence among us tonight compel us to live fully, trusting that by your hand oppression is ended, sin is abolished, guilt is conquered, and that holy love eternally triumphs over evil. Hear the good news. 
the saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. A reading from the prophets, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you. As with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be turned burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been given for us, a son is born to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, his authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. these words as they come to us from Psalm 96. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, for he is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him. All the earth say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. From the Epistle of Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself the people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. From Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus 
and all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Curinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. From Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those in God's favor. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words in her heart and pondered them there. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send the son into the world to condemn it but in order that the world might be saved through him. That, my friend, is the Christmas miracle. That is the Christmas message. I know that people sometimes like to debate with one another. They like to poke at each other about what people believe. Sometimes they'll say to Christians, oh, do you really believe that was a virgin birth? Do you really believe that uh, there was a star in the sky? Do you really believe all this stuff? The miracle isn't in all the details. The miracle is that God is with us. That's the miracle and the message of the Christmas season. We are told that God loved us. And we can take great confidence in knowing that God still loves us and loves us so much to join us in our human experience. Now I don't have to tell anyone here that the human experience is messy and chaotic. It's full of heartbreak, disappointment, and pain.
so that we would not have to do it alone. God became a baby. A baby that may cry in the mother's arms. A baby that get hungry. A baby helpless. The great I am, the one who put together the seeds of the stars, would become helpless. Now we are told that Jesus' birth took place in the fullness of time. This simply means that God worked to bring the nativity at the right place and at the right moment. And that Jesus' birth was a perfect time of birth. Not just maybe for Mary, maybe not for Mary, but definitely for all humankind. For all humanity, for all creation, it was the right time right place. Recently I read an article that said Christ's birth was his first sermon. And it is perfectly in tune with every other sermon he preached. Blessed are the poor in spirit, who love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Let the first be last and the last be first. Someone slides you, turn and give them the other cheek. These are the other messages, all in tune with what Jesus came to be with us. The Nativity is the perfect point to bring God's love into our lives in a way that Christians have been able to understand and celebrate for generations. God chose form and place and man that we would be able to connect with and say, yes, we understand this. We may not be able to understand the mind of God who stands above all creation, who can hold an atom in one finger and an entire constellation of stars on the other hand. Simultaneously. This is God. This amazing, powerful God joined us in our humanity. And all of a sudden, God is not distant. God is not far off and away. God is not unreachable. God is right here. God is here and now. Emmanuel, it means God with us. Jesus, God saved.
My friends, this is the Lord's table. Anyone who trusts in Jesus Christ is welcome here. It does not matter your tradition. It does not matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you're feeling in this moment. You are welcome. You are welcome at this table because Jesus Christ is the one who gives the invitation. And in those times when we might feel our worst, or are most discouraged, that is when we come to the table with the most joy. And in the moments when we celebrate, we come to celebrate more, to know that Jesus Christ is the host. So come and be a part of this table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. O oh, Holy God, this is the night. Your heart bursts open with joy. This is the evening grace pours out of heaven. This is the moment when you come to make all things new, ever creating God. You shape life out of the shadows of chaos and molded your children from the earth. Looking in the mirror as you formed us, breathing your spirit into our empty lungs. Made for life with you in the garden, you designed for us. But we ran away into the wilds of the world, believing we were wiser than you, that we could make our own way. Yet your love never failed us. Your compassion was never taken from us. You would not abandon us in our foolishness. You brought us out of slavery into the land of promise and hope. You sent your prophets to speak to us of your disappointment in us and to remind us of your dreams for us. Your love for us was so passionate that you sent your only son to become one of us, that we might be one with you again. So on this night when heaven reaches down to caress creation with healing, we join the angel choirs who sing your glory and with your people in every time and place, we lift our hearts in joyful praise.
pour out your spirit upon us, wonderful counselor. We lift the broken bread, praying we would be made whole, at peace with one another, and reconciled to you. As we drink from the vineyard of grace, we believe that our salvation has come, and we are one with Christ. Our flesh filled with his spirit of sacrifice, our spirits refreshed by his compassion and heart. As your joy flows into us, may we become a river carrying your justice to the poor, as your hope sings in our hearts, may we carry your righteousness to all who suffer. And as we taste the promise of peace to prepare for us in your kingdom, may we live for you and serve your children as we have been served by the child of Christmas, Jesus Christ, our blessed Savior. And now, together, let us pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread. He gave thanks to God. Then he broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. As he poured out the wine, he gave thanks to God and said, This cup holds the new covenant of my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of of sins. Drink of it. All of them. So my friends, that often as we eat this bread, drink of the cup, we proclaim the death of our risen Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. This evening we will take communion by intention. We will invite you to come up to the center aisle to receive a piece of bread that you will dip in a cup and then eat. As you go to the sides, I have two helpers, Elena and Abigail, come on up please. Each have a candle, and so you will bring your candles up and light your candles off of their candles. So we'll, so we'll be serving that communion first to the Lord. celebrated your presence with us. May we grow in the divine love of Christ, who humbly shared our human life. Fill us with joy and send us out to share this good news with others. We ask this through Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. Amen. It only takes a little bit of light to penetrate the darkness. If you have little candles in front of you, we will be extinguishing them and putting them in the baskets that you leave. But don't let the flame that is within you, that flame of Christ, ever go out. Let it burn and break the darkness wherever you are. And may the grace and the mercy and the peace of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be. 